Gambit is very seasoned. Is he gonna like lube up or no? Okay. We don't need to see this. We really don't. Jiggly! Hey guys, it's your girl Aisha, K Geek XX Chic, and we are back with another reaction to The Legend of Vox Machina. We're now on season two, episode eight, which is called Echo Tree. So the last episode, we saw what happened to everybody after Keyleth portaled them out of that cave of hell. We see that some of the group ended up in the Fey Realm, which is where Keyleth was trying to get them, but a small portion of them, Grog, um, sorry, Grog, uh, Scanlan, and uh, Pike, ended up being back in Taldorai from what they can see. But they needed to heal up, well, Ke or Pike needed to heal up in particular. So she was able to heal herself, but we see that there was a little battle there between Grog and that cursed blade. He was really loath to give it up. We see that, you know, finally Pike had to confront him about it and be like, yo, that, that sword's a problem. And we've seen it now literally be a problem. And we see that there was a hold that this sword had over Grog, understandably, because he'd been with it for a while and it's magical. And thank you for the people in the comments who explained that it's cursed. And that was one of the reasons why it had this effect on its, its wielder. But anyway, thankfully Grog had enough love for Pike and his friends that he broke his relationship with this sword um, off, quite literally, by breaking it. But the sword said, hey, you know, I'm not going out without a fight. And it looks like it completely drained Grog of his muscles, at least in his arms, to the point where he could barely move. So apparently they think it's fixable. Pike said that she needs to get certain medical or sorry, magical ingredients, but she does think that she can restore Grog at least restore him to being able to use his arms again. So yes, that at least is done done and dealt with. And they also have a few little moments between uh, Pike and Scanlan. And then on the other side of things, we see the rest of the group trying to navigate the Fey Realm and Percy hoping that he was gonna be the expert, but realizing very quickly that a lot of what he learned was theoretical. And they meet up with a weird little imp type creature who takes pleasure in <clears throat> creatively writing about them, shall we say? But anyhow, he says he can take them to what they're looking for and he just will do it because they've entertained them. And they finally decide to follow him after having a lot of hijinks on their own. But we also see that uh, Vax, yes, Vax is dealing with this suit. He's recognizing that this Fey Realm is reacting negatively to the vestige that he is wearing. And he's also recognizing that there's something going on with this suit, something that the matron wants from him. And he's not sure what it is, but he's pretty certain that whatever it is, it's going to pull him away from the group at some point. So that's kind of where we ended the episode. Ready to get into this one. Just before I do a reminder that if you would like to be notified of when I upload these shows, please go ahead, hit that subscribe button and that notification bell. And please continue to show love and all those great informations that you keep dropping in the comments. I appreciate it a lot, guys. All right, that out of the way, let's get into the episode right now. Mmm, nice melons. Thank you. <laughs> in times of danger, the elven nobility have arcane means of moving it. Hmm, so they know about the dragons, I'm assuming? You let us here for your amusement, didn't you? Oh, Maybe. Of course not. A little bit. Certainly are a lot of guards. Yeah. More than I remember. I mean, if they had to teleport oh, here, God. there's probably a reason. Just a few more blocks and we're... Oh, God, hi. We seek an audience with Ambassador Vassar. How do you know that name? We're his children. <laughs> Y'all don't recognize us? Rude. I'd have been like, um, I technically own all of you, so get out of my way, peasants. Oh, nice house. Be honest. Do I look like I come from nobility? I mean, oh, it's outfit easy to change. Act noble. Just be a bit of a shit and wear what everyone else is wearing. Period. We are definitely not worth you. Oh, okay. Percy's spitting a little game. Who are you talking to, Mum? Oh, right. Stepmom? Uh, sister. Okay. Hi. I love your feather. Cute. Love her. Thank you. Then it's yours. <laughs> A gift from your half-sister. But father said you'd never come back. Damn. I didn't miss the chance to meet you. Ah. Well played. Your father will be pleased to see you. <clears throat> he won't. Hi! You notified me you'd be gracing us with your presence. Oh my god, I gotta make an appointment to see my damn dad? Look at you, dear. Real vestments. Oh, you're so beautiful. <laughs> Aw, that's a dad. This is my great-great-grandfather, Will oh, Hanshaw. grandfather. Sorry. <laughs> what? Oh, Grog! 
Did you forget to eat? Hi, Pop Pop. Oh. Oh, I wish I could say that I've I've seen him look worse, but I don't think I have. <laughs> Thank you for the brutal honesty. They look like they live in a little hobbit house. We had no recourse but to retreat to the Fey Realm. We've Got been amassing it. arms and training our soldiers to confront the dragons. So you plan to join the fight? Or defend. And you are Percival, Percival Frederick Stein von Musilkolowski de Rollo the Third, the Royal House of Whitestone. Mm. I'm unfamiliar with a Vox <gasps> Machina. Lies! Legends say it fires arrows strong enough to wound a titan. I'd like it. You want to chase a fleeting rumor into a desolate waste. Is it though? The very idea of Vaxeldan and Vexalia standing up for the greater good is, well, rich. Don't, don't break the... Have you any idea the burden your sudden arrival has caused my family? How? We've been here for five minutes. No harm intended. But he just said... It's fine. Yeah. This is how she acts around her daddy. If you can offer us any assistance, we would be most grateful. It's the least I can do for family. Listen, I completely get where they're coming from, but that is how you deal with a narcissist. You kind of have to stroke that ego, as nauseating as it is. I gotta swallow that. Get on, you grog! Ain't going down the front side flapper track. Oh, oh it's a suppository. Uh, allow me. I know how to work both ends. Okay, I'm like, why not? Scanlan is very seasoned. Is he gonna like lube up or no? Okay. All right. Protect Grog. And the rest we don't of need to friends. see this. <laughs> we really don't. Gently. <laughs> that wasn't gentle. Grog's not gonna sit well for a while. It's Lady Vexalia. Lady. That's right. Despite your relationship. Do watch your manners towards a noble. Don't you dare talk to him like okay, that. Okay, stand up we for your man. You seeking aid, and you insult my friends. Yeah, Vax is like finally. <laughs> for my years of civility, civility. Oh, veiled, been... thinly veiled hostility. We won't fail, which is more than I can say about you as a father. Boop. T. Show me that bow, and I will give you the welcome you think you deserve. Until then, do not. I mean, I feel like he's not even worth proving anything to, seriously. What the fuck do you mean? No need to find out. <laughs> Kids. <laughs> you'll figure it out soon enough, sweetie. And you'll probably say it to that man. Because even though you might be highborn, bad parenting is just typically something that carries on no matter how many kids are born. Bringing that title on you. I hope it didn't upset you, Vex. I think she understood the intent. No one other than my brother has ever stood up for me like that. Percival is, if nothing, a gentleman. I may have wits in class, but I'll never have what you do. Grit? A pure heart. Oh, that. We spent our childhood with mother. Then father had us brought to live with him. Why? If he didn't like you? Why did he pull us away from home? He, he had no love for us. Yeah, that's a good question. Must have felt good to tell him to fuck off, though. Right? So cathartic. <sighs> it's wonderful. Thank you. Nice. I think I'll feel much better when I shove that bow in his stupid smug face. I mean, do you have to? I feel like he's not even worth it, but I get it. She loves her dad, despite it all. Sadness. Longing. What did this to you? It's a good question. Let's not stick around long enough to find out. Oh, why would you touch that? Close your heads! Lock it out! Uh, Percy, especially you! The shade mark is home to a cursed archfey named Sondor, but- Archfey? Ah, how oh, reassuring. Oh god, we lost one already. Yeah, you went and touched things you didn't have any business touching! Oh, so I'm gonna be like this forever? You mean you went through all that for nothing? Your body's gonna need a kickstart. Some significant stimulation. I gotta stimulate myself. <laughs> I knew something was coming from Shut that. My hand. <laughs> like in front of everyone? Your muscles will awaken poof, when they're properly aroused. This this wording. I'm getting real mixed. Right, that makes her there's gotta be other words. Well, looks like there's a lot of successes before us, so encouraging. Vex? Are you all right? She clearly isn't. 
How is it passing through this muck? Vexolia! Because she's got the enchantment, yo. If approval is what you seek, sadly, your father will never give it. That is, well, maybe true, but the point is it shouldn't matter. So do you have to stay with this guy forever now? Is that what's happening? Pain has found you. Oh, God, the squelching. No thanks. I understand you. Oh, my God. What in the stranger things is happening here? How do you know so much about me? He's an archfey. You made this for me? It is as beautiful as you. Oh, Lord. I'm not going to keep her in this fantasy world of the life she wished she'd had. And I can cross many gifts. Oh, God. What is this? Where has his hands been? What is this vestige worth? Come on, Vax. But it will never be enough. Yeah, you're never leaving. He's got the bow! Come on, Kayla, stretch! We would be perfect together, dear broken Vexalia. Wow, someone saying, calling you broken, sis? This is not it. All I need from you is, is your heart. My heart? Right? My heart is someone else's. You need me. You could never give me what I need. Right? Can you maybe take a bath and not be dropping black ichor? Well done. Sister. Move fast. Ew, not evil brutes. You don't have time for this. Just gonna grow back, yeah. Living things. I've got an idea, but I need you two to keep them busy. Okay, this is what I like to see. Solutions not, I'm not sure if I can. Just do it, that's right. Proud of you, Keyleth. You reject me? Uh, have you seen yourself, sir? <laughs> Respectfully, you. Right, twig dick. <laughs> I mean, it's facts though, isn't it? Ooh, Archer versus Archer. You're ruining everything. Good. Oh no. Is it a bad thing? I kind of wish that Percy still had his shadow demon, man. Okay, yes, Keyleth in her final form. She looks amazing. Good job! That is how you fight a tree. Exactly. Now let's keep moving, quickly. You think you can leave me? Um, yes. This is like literally the definition of a toxic relationship, sir. Not so tough now, are we? Oh, okay, sir. Overcompensating much? Alone and afraid. Oh my god, enough with the speeches. She doesn't like you, bro. She never did. Your words are as empty as your Exactly. You full of crap. It's stuck. Bleed. Bleed, Black Icker. Oh, oh, yep, no. You can keep that to yourself. Reach for your mama. Okay. Thanks for the bow. Don't forget your gift. Hope it doesn't come with the corruption, too, because that would suck. Maybe all these vestiges are cursed. That you're eager to show your father that. Screw your dad. I'm not ready. I don't think I can talk to him again. I usually hate the theater, but that had it all. Drama, action, family shit. Oh my gosh. This man needs a slap. Because you lot are going home. Oh, thanks. Figured you deserve something in return. Thank you. We this... are talented like that. <laughs> what are you, really? Excellent question. Does it matter? Portal's closing. Oh, shit. Right. Everyone through. Thanks. The Fey Realm is definitely better in the books. <laughs> is that supposed to be an insult? <laughs> okay. Who are you? Stay alive. And why are you a pervert? Guess we don't get to find out yet. Oh, 
emotional. What is the source of your strength, Grog? Myth Carver showed me those gauntlets, remember? In the city? They're in Western. I know who has them. Hmm. What? That's amazing. So this will be easy I don't then. think so. I remember what I remember. They didn't look nice. Those gauntlets belong to my uncle. Oh, I thought they looked kind of grog-like. He killed me with them. Huh? You end on that? How do you kill somebody with something and they're still here? I don't explain. Hmm? Is Grog immortal? Does Grog come back? Was there a resurrection spell? Battle was? I have questions. Okay, guys. Well, that was another really good episode. We now have two vestiges. And interestingly enough, the twins, both are the first two recipients of a vestige. But yeah, we got a little background into Vex and Vax and the rest of the team, really, because we've kind of gotten snippets. But now the rest of the group, of course, less the people that were still in Taldorai, they now kind of have an idea of why Vex and Vax don't talk much about their past or their home. And we see that uh, their home can transport. Apparently there's enough elven magic that can move their entire um, their entire city from realm to realm as necessary. And right now they're staying in the Fey realm because I'm assuming that dragons can't enter it or enter it easily. I gotta think, but I'm thinking it's not impossible for them to get there. But either way, that's where they are. And we have a reunion, but it's not very sweet. We do find out that they, the twins do have a little sister, which is cute. And I'm glad that they were accepting of her and didn't hold any grudges because it's not the baby's fault that they share a really <clears throat> interesting father. But we see that there is still a lot of tension there. Their father is still treating them like they're a nuisance. It's a very interesting situation because I don't think their father actually hates them because I think if that was the case, he wouldn't even have bothered giving them an audience. I mean, I don't know. I guess in nobility, there is like a certain level of heirs you have to keep up as far as your family, etc. But I feel like he's at the level and he's also shown enough disdain that he could have just excommunicated them or, you know, disowned them, whatever they do in their realm if he really didn't want to have anything to do with them anymore. But I, like I said, I need to know the story. Like, who is their mother? Why did he get with a human in the first place? Like, why did he take them away? Like she said, uh, Vex, she's like, why did our dad take us from our mom if he didn't even like us, right? So there's something more going on. I just feel like there, maybe I'm reading too much into it, but I feel like there's a more of a story there. I don't think the dad has as much disdain as what he's showing. I'm assuming that there's something going on, whether it's hurt, whether it's pain, something around their whole situation that unfortunately he's taking out on the twins. But as I said, I don't think it's that he doesn't love them, but all the same, even if that's the case, it doesn't excuse the fact that he has treated them so poorly and made them feel so unwanted and unloved. Like that's just, that's just lifelong trauma that they're gonna have to work through, unfortunately, because of him. But anyway, I am curious as to what that situation is. Cause even when she uh, said, you know, I'm gonna get this bow and prove that you're wrong. He was like, good. Like, I want you to, right? Like, that's just not the right, the right, you know, if he really didn't care, he'd be just like, you know, it doesn't matter what you bring me, it's never gonna change. You know what I mean? That that's kind of more what he could say, but it's almost like he's hoping that they do that. Like, it's like he wants something to like, I don't know, it's like he wants more. I don't think he wants their relationship to be like this, but he's got his reasons for why he's emotionally unavailable to them. So anyway, just, you know, for the drama, the drama lover in me, I'd love to know a little bit more about where that comes from, but it's definitely not a priority, obviously in the in the grand scheme of things. And yeah, we see that they go into the, what do they call it? The shade mark. And uh, they find out that one of the reasons people have not been able to get the bow in the past is because it's, there's an arch fae that's trapped there and he uses basically emotional manipulation to keep people there. And I guess he takes their heart. I don't know, I'm assuming that was literal. <laughs> but anyways, uh, that's typically what he does. And Vex being silly and touching things she shouldn't touch, he got into her head and just went straight for that huge issue that she is still working through, which is that desire for approval from her father. And I don't even think it's so much even approval, it's love, right? She wants to feel like her dad loves her, that it's that there is some type of affection there for her as any child would want from their parent. And again, I don't know what happened to their mom, if their mom's still around or she's not, but I'm assuming she's not. So that would make the last remaining parent even more important to Vex and probably Vax as well. But you know, Vax is much more about the anger where his dad's concerned, but that's typically the way it goes with these relationships, right? You know, girls tend to be daddy's girls and boys tend to be mama's boys. So, you know, boys, dads and sons do tend to butt heads more than not. And I think that's what we're kind of getting where Vax is concerned with his dad. But either way, we see that, uh, what's his name? Uh, Sing, oh, what's his name? I can't remember the name of the, of the Archfey, but either way, 
he goes straight for that issue. And of course it's it's in the forefront of her mind because she just had a, um, a face off with her dad and he tries to tempt her. You know, he's like, all you want is acceptance. I can give you that. I can remake the, the, the memories and the moments that you thought were important in a way that'll make you happy. But then he also is saying like, oh, by the way, you're never gonna be good enough for him. So you should just come with me. <laughs> So it's a bit uh, confusing, but either way, he's trying to manipulate her. And if she didn't already have such a strong relationship, not only with her sibling, but with this group that she's formed, I think that, you know, she could have been easily tempted. But as soon as she was like, I want your heart, she was like, wait a minute, whoa, <laughs> hold up a minute. Uh, no, that's a little too much. Like we, we just met. We just met and you're literally trying to emotionally manipulate me. So no. So thankfully she did that. We got to give her her props. She did that. She fought him. She went toe to toe with him, him using a vestige, her using just her bow and arrow. But it shows that she is no joke. Vex is definitely someone who's amazing and someone to be proud of, father, sibling, friend, or otherwise. And yeah, she ended up getting that bow. She defeated him with that little, thank God for Percy creating that present for her. She used that gift from someone who has her heart to take out the corrupted heart of the Archface. So good for her. She now has the bow because her hers broke. She definitely needed one. And now they have two vestiges, so yay. And uh, we see that, uh, you know, they basically said to her, like, we can go back and see your dad if you want. But she said, like, she's not ready to do that right now. And I'm hoping she gets to the point where she realizes that her dad's approval is not necessary. Obviously, we all would love to have the approval of our parents, but if they are not willing to give it to us, and what's worse is that they're toxic towards us, hopefully we can all get to a point where we recognize that it's not necessary, that you can determine for yourself your worthiness and everyone should feel worthy to themselves. Anyway, we'll see how that goes, but that's how we ended up things on their end. So that was really good. And obviously a little bit of progression between Percy and, Va um, and Vex. They had that really cute conversation of bonding over the fact that um, being a noble has its, its ups and downs. <laughs> and then on the other side of things, we didn't have as much of the other part of the group. But yes, they're still trying to get our boy Grog back to peak form. He had to have the, I had to say world's largest and creepiest suppository ever <laughs> administered, but apparently it did manage to get rid of the corruption from the sword. So it won't be interfering with him being able to heal at this point, but we see that he needs to uh, be stimulated in their words in order to get the the muscles and everything to re reawaken itself and that strength to return. And this kind of comes back to what we saw in episode two when Grog went to that place in Vasselheim, that guy telling him, you need to know what the source of your strength is, buddy. You need to figure it out and tap into it. And he still doesn't know, right? He didn't know back then. He started thinking it was the sword. The sword is now gone. So yeah, I believe this is still part of Grog's strength journey, his inner discovery of what really fuels his strength and the source of his strength. And he's gonna have to figure it out. Otherwise he's gonna be walking around swinging them arms indefinitely. But we also discovered that the next vestige, which was in Western, is in the hands of Grog's uncle which I remember from the flashback we saw last episode or the one before that whoever he was thinking of looked a lot like Grog. So I'm like, either they're more giants like him or half giants like him or family, which now we know it's family. So I'm excited to see more of Grog's past because we haven't really heard anything about him <laughs> at all. I mean, yeah, him, Pike, Scanlan, right? They're the ones we really haven't gotten much background on at this point. Yeah, I think those three in particular, we've just kind of, we never really heard them talk about their background or their family yet. So yeah, if we're starting to get a little of Grog's, Grog's backstory, I am definitely down for that and ready and waiting to see it. But yeah, this is another good episode. I liked it a lot. I'm glad that our team is starting to motor on along. And I have to give honorable mention to Keyleth. My girl is starting to grow in her confidence. This is all I've ever wanted for her since season one. I really love that she just came up with an idea and said, I'm gonna try it. No need for pep talks, no unsure shaky hand speech. I love this. I'm hoping that's gonna be a trend for her going forward to lean more into what she's capable of doing or at least trying to see if she's capable of it. So yeah. The team's growing and I love seeing it. So yeah, great episode. I hope you guys enjoyed watching with me. If you did, please show some love and again, keep them comments coming and I will see you in the next one.